Um, so quite congratulations on your um, pronunciation there. G'day. The full phrase is, g'day, are you going all right? <laughs> anyway, so this just uh, um, came out of some research that I did with African communities and also looking at the literature around African uh, diaspora communities and HIV. Um, one interesting, uh, uh, I guess, factor in, in my thinking about the AIDS epidemic was its origin. And of course, uh, it is known that the virus originated in apes in Africa. But the question of how it got from apes to humans and from humans in Africa to humans around the world is, has been a vexed question. Um, and originally, um, as with a lot, of, a lot of issues with Africa, it, it does have links with colonialization. Um, the uh, the uh, traditional bushmeat um, uh, trade was uh, expanded and augmented in the uh, colonial era when the Belgians got there. Um, you can see that um, with increased urbanization, population mobility and commercialization of that industry, um, the low level exposures that occurred um, probably uh, became um, more, um, more frequent. And then with changing social mores and, um, and uh, again the increased urbanization, uh, sexual transmission of the virus when it adapted to humans um, became more frequent. But one of the interesting um, developments, and this is in, well discussed in this book, uh, The Origin of AIDS by um, Jacques Pepin from Canada, is the, the mass uh, treatment with non-sterile needles uh, in colonial era for conditions such as sleeping sickness and, uh, uh, and, and other conditions, which probably boosted the prevalence of the virus in populations. And then subsequent um, globalization and population mobility uh, and increased uh, civil disturbance and, and military conflicts uh, enabled it to disseminate through Africa and then with globalization um, Africa is no longer just in Africa. So the African diaspora of course um, the, the uh, links back with the slave trade both transatlantic and the Indian Ocean slave trade did move African people from Africa to other parts of the world and um, with time and with the changing relationships between those colonial countries and, and their former colonies, um, a lot of the, uh, the flows tended to be more voluntary, seeking employment. And uh, that poem by um, Louise Coverley, um, of course, is a, is a classic um, uh, description of that uh, reverse colonization of, of West Indians going to, uh, to the UK. Um, that, of course, does have a lot of political, cultural uh, complexities. Um, ethnicity, again, um, the, the frameworks where we describe identity, uh, whether it's black or African, uh, does vary from place to place. So I might be black in America, I might be coloured in South Africa, I might just be me in Brazil, um, and uh, you know, I'm African, Australian in Australia. So it's, it's really not a fixed identity, and one of the things, uh, the complexity of this uh, needs to be borne in mind. But one of the interesting things is that individual level connection um, that needs to be uh, considered when you're talking about exposure to HIV and the, both the geographical context of where, which country you're in physically but also the social and cultural uh, context of where you are, the relationships you form. And this, this really needs to be borne in mind. Um, that picture in there is the unofficial king of Switzerland, uh, Lee Scratch Perry, so another exponent of the African diaspora. <laughs> Looking at um, the the place of African diaspora populations in uh, the <coughs> HIV epidemics of the industrialized world. So looking loosely with the uh, OECD as, a, as a, a group of the rich club of countries, um, some of the countries do give, um, they do delineate uh, African migrants as part of their, um, of their mm -hmm. HIV surveillance. Now the definitions do vary, sometimes it's by nationality, sometimes it's by country of birth, sometimes it's by self-identified ethnicity. But however you look at it, the place of African and black populations in those HIV epidemics is very uh, prominent, out of proportion to the population uh, presence. So particularly in, in large countries in Europe with large HIV epidemics such as the United Kingdom and France, um, there's a large proportion of the, of the HIV cases diagnosed in any given year are actually uh, African migrants or, or black African ethnicity. Um, as compared to somewhere like Poland, where it's a vanishingly small proportion. It's interesting that in countries like Scandinavia and also in Israel, where their immigration is uh, sometimes humanitarian, there's still quite a, a large proportion of the HIV diagnoses are amongst African migrants, um, even though um, the actual overall size of the epidemics in those countries is very small compared to places like the UK. 
the situation in the United States is a bit difficult because once you are once you're there, if you're African, once you go to the to the U.S., you're black and you disappear into the figures. There's only a few states that actually make a differentiation between recent African migrants and you know people who have been four or five generations in the United States. Um, but even in those states, um, there is an overrepresentation of African migrants amongst the uh, HIV diagnoses, but it varies very widely from state to state, probably to do with the um, degree of African migration to those uh, states, as well as to the availability of reliable figures. In Australia, um, African migration is not on a large scale compared to some other countries, but nevertheless there still is an appreciable presence of African people within the HIV epidemic. So looking in more detail, um, you can see with the, um, the trends of, uh, of um, uh, in heterosexual epidemic, particularly in the top left there, uh, the presence of African, uh, black African people in the United Kingdom is, is uh, sufficient to uh, have the figures split between heterosexual African and non-African because they don't you know, pretty much fit on the same scale. Um, in the top right, you can see in the state, U.S. state of Minnesota, um, the one percent of the population is um, uh, African-born, but the, um, the, there's a much higher proportion of African people in the uh, diagnosis of HIV. Um, and when looking at uh, Israel, um, the, both the Jewish immigrants from Ethiopia and the non-Jewish African migrants uh, form quite a large proportion of the uh, HIV epidemic in that country. Um, one of the other interesting features of this discussion is this constant term sub-Saharan Africa, um, which is sometimes melded with black Africa and sometimes just Africa in the discussions, but that's also very variable depending on which country you're in. So if you're in a country uh, like France, where most of France's colonial um, possessions were actually in North Africa mm -hmm. and the deserts of West Africa, the proportion of North Africans amongst African migrants with HIV is the majority from Algeria, um, uh, for example, whereas in the United Kingdom, most are from sub-Saharan Africa because that's where the colonies were. Australia's got an interesting position in the HIV uh, epidemic globally, so a very small, very low prevalence country, but with quite a successful response in, uh, overall, um, particularly among some of the key populations. So among sex workers, female sex workers and people injecting drugs and indigenous people, the uh, HIV epidemic is very, very small by global standards. The prevalence amongst indigenous people is the same as the rest of the population, and the prevalence amongst uh, sex workers and people injecting drugs is also extremely low, which is not the case in a lot of parts of the world. And that's been, uh, we think, a result of the strong partnership between affected communities and government and, and uh, health services. Access to treatment is widespread and generally affordable, um, and there's a strong record in basic science and epidemiological HIV research. However, there are some ongoing challenges. So there are still areas of high incidence amongst men who have sex with men. Um, and the number of heterosexually acquired <coughs> HIV cases in Australia is growing. Now, because of our small population, demonstrating that statistically is hard, but it is real. Um, it's, also, it's mostly in people born abroad and uh, also people exposed abroad. And a large proportion of those people are people from sub-Saharan Africa. Um, as for treatment and support, um, generally good, but for women with HIV and also for ethnic minorities, um, there are significant barriers to that su uh, su uh, support and, and treatment. And there are still structural barriers to uh, some key populations accessing uh, treatment. And unfortunately, we are rather conservative when it comes to innovation. I'll skip over a little bit about African communities in Australia, except to make the point that we do have a large proportion in Victoria, the state of people from the Horn of Africa, um, who may, may more identify more strongly ethnically or religiously rather than racially, for example. Um, and we also have a large Egyptian uh, population here. There is screening t uh, of HIV to, for people seeking to enter uh, Australia, and that seems to be, it's not a discrimination based on disease, but on any expensive condition. And of course, HIV as a chronic disease uh, is an expensive condition on the public health system, and so most people fail the uh, health requirement when, when they have HIV, even if they're successfully able to, um, to get a visa after that. However, there are um, problems with, um, with uh, there are some specific uh, policies around uh, sub-Saharan African students who are staying longer, uh, which is a, a somewhat discriminatory um, policy. There are a 
there is a perception amongst some African communities that there is no HIV in Australia because of that screening policy. But of course, people with HIV are able to appeal that waiver. And there are a number of people with HIV who are able to migrate and, and legally uh, live in Australia. Mm -hmm. Amongst new cases of HIV, um, the, num the proportion of uh, African people diagnosed with HIV varies. It's around 8% overall. It has been as high as 11%, more recently about 7% of diagnoses. But uh, of people born uh, outside Australia, um, people born in sub-Saharan Africa and people born in Asia are the largest other groups. And uh, that's been a, a continuing um, presence. And the diagnosis rate by per capita of population amongst people born in sub-Saharan Africa is far, far higher than it is amongst people born in Australia. So the issues for the African diaspora, for people living with, with HIV from the African diaspora, they are overrepresented. They're mainly heterosexually exposed often diagnosed late, and because of the prevalence of TB in sub-Saharan Africa, TB as a, as a, a co-diagnosis is common. And there's also a difference in the kind of viruses which people are exposed to. But uh, that seems to have no clinical implications at present, but that yet, is yet to be uh, fully explored. And the stigma is a major problem in diagnosis, in treatment and support. And that includes HIV-related stigma within African communities and racist HIV-related stigma against African communities, and that has actually uh, impeded some of the discussion in this country around this topic. And there are also issues, particularly people who have on temporary visas uh, with accessing um, treatment, uh, publicly funded affordable treatment. There have been some interesting developments over the years, um, both uh, overseas and here. So there's been an increasing recognition that African populations are important in HIV epidemiology in the global north or industrialised countries, particularly in the UK where uh, Kevin Fenton and others and uh, uh, Julia Del Amo from Spain have made a, a particular study of migrants and particularly African migrants and HIV. And that's been recognised also in the United States now as well, which may have some, some relation to Kevin uh, having gone over there to, uh, to the AIDS program for a while. So, I just, there are a lot of people to acknowledge, including the ABDGN for putting this one together. But um, the main uh, thing to take from it is that although there is a continent called Africa, Africa is not in Africa alone. And HIV started in Africa, but it's now a global issue. And there really is no way of drawing lines and corralling it off. Um, this is something that we need to recognize, stand up and say, yes, this is an issue that affects us as a community, um, and deal with it uh, from within. So thank you.